We're so glad you joined us for this week's message from Anchor Chapel in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Our prayer is that you're encouraged and challenged in your relationship with Jesus. Be blessed as you listen to this week's message. So what we're going to do today is I kind of planned on this last filter's message to really be about um, the, what, the unseen world. So since we're going into this week is Halloween on Wednesday night, you, you begin to see on TV all the time, you begin to see all the, the, the shows and stuff, and you begin to, all the movies are coming out that are like all this horror, all this like stuff, and it's just like at, at a certain time of the year, everybody just loses their mind and goes, and goes for all this. And I'm not the kind of person that's into this kind of stuff. But, but, but I also don't believe that like, that like it's like the, the devil is the, the movies. Like I believe there's so much more than that. I remember a few years ago, I was told to preach a sermon series or a sermon against the Twilight movies. So like when Twilight came out, like I remember a pastor told me, you have to preach against it because it's evil. And it was just like the newest thing on the market. And I was like, I don't know that like it's that, is, that it's like that much of a threat compared to what the devil is always trying to do in us. So like what's interesting is like the devil can do something in us and, and just like a great magician would do, he'll use like this sleight of hand and he'll use like a distraction to make you miss what he's been doing this whole time. Like most, like none of you have any idea that a donkey literally walked into the back of the room today. There's a donkey right there behind you. So if you look, I mean, nobody had any idea that there's a donkey back there dressed up. So, hey, thanks, Ben. I appreciate it, man. You, you can go. I just wanted to, because I want to, hey, man, no, this is not your time. Get out of here. You are out of line, sir. I need you to leave right now, crazy donkey person. Out of here. All right. Man, why don't y'all give it up for Ben getting tackled by the ushers today? Okay, so the reason that we did that really silly illustration is because I want you to see something. The enemy, like a great magician, will always use misdirection to get you focused on the wrong thing. So if you think the devil is just horror movies and you think, I'm going to abstain from that, then he can come in through all these other avenues in your life. And he can attack you in areas that you didn't see it coming whenever he makes you think, this is what I look like. This is what, you know, the Bible actually says that our enemy, he, not only does he prowl around like a roaring lion, but it describes him as an angel of light, that he can disguise himself as something actually good. So the enemy is always trying to work his way into your life and trying to disguise himself so that he can have access into your life. So what I want to do today is I want to look at how the enemy does that. And in the filter series, we've been looking at different types of filters and what they do. And today I want to focus on, on a, a type of a filter called a a polarizing filter. If you're a photographer, you might know this, but a polarizing filter is a filter that you can screw onto the front of any lens. And because of that filter, you'll be able to see past some of the reflection that you might see over water or on glass. So I've got an illustration here. On the, on the left side, this is a photo taken with the filter. And on the right is a photo without the filter. So all of the glare kind of hides what's under the water. But with that filter on, it enables you to see beyond what you could normally see either with your own eyes or even with the strength of that camera. No matter how good it is, you need that filter to see past that, 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 that shimmering you know, surface of the water. So in our lives, in every single one of us, we need the help of the Spirit of God to see past, and we need to have a belief and a mindset and a worldview that we understand that there's a world at work all the time beyond what we see with our naked eyes. And if you live, and if you live your life like just oblivious to that, you will constantly be under attack and you won't know what's happening. You won't know what's going on in your life. So I want to talk today about just what's going on in the darkness and in your life and it might help you to win a few more battles. You guys want to win some battles today? Yes. I remember a few uh, months ago, Brooke and I decided to try. Like, I love Mexican food, and I love buffets. And I'd never heard of a Mexican buffet before in my life. And we found a Mexican buffet here in town. So we're, like, pumped up. So we go to this buffet. And while we're there, we're, like, we're eating. And we're, like, you get the first plate, and you're, like, this is amazing. And then, like, you're ready to go get your second plate. But you, how many of you know, like, if you see something in a restaurant that's just off, sometimes it could ruin that experience. So, like, we, we're in this place. And, like, we're all eating. We're enjoying it. And I look over to the wall. And on the wall, from under the table, crawls this roach. And this roach is just on the wall in there. And I'm, like, oh, it ruined it. I put my fork down. I was, like, don't eat anything else, family. And, like, you just, like, like when something like that happens, like, it just ruins the whole experience. We've never been there again. And every time we pass by, we're, like, roach place. You know, it's just, like, you've labeled it now. 
But like, I ain't trying to ruin your experience at buffets, but like, just because you saw it that one time doesn't mean it hadn't been there the whole time. So like, many, you know, you might have your favorite restaurant that like, that you get away, you know, you might have a good experience, but they got stuff happening in every restaurant that you don't want to know about. So, but the truth is that there's always something going on in the darkness. There's always something happening in the darkness that we, if we're aware of it, we can better fight it. We can better address it. I want to look at the, the Bible says in Ephesians 6, Paul is writing and he's challenging the church. He says, look, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against, against what? Against strategies, all the strategies. That word is so interesting because it, it, it lets us know that the enemy has a plan that he's working on against us. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, though it may seem like it many times but against evil rulers, authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. There can be something happening in your life, and you not know why it is going on. And unless you get the answer to it, you can't fight it, or you can't figure out the solution. For years, I've had like this back pain in my lower back, and some of you have told this story too, but I've had this, I've had this back pain in my lower back, so I went to a chiropractor, and he's like, well, let me just go ahead and get an x-ray just in case. So I don't know if you can tell on my last vertebrae down on the bottom, I've circled it for you, but I have actually a fractured vertebrae. So the little shark fin on the end of your vertebrae there, it's actually fractured. So that one, that one disc, you can kind of see it slip forward a little bit. And he thinks it's probably from the years where I used to skate and jump off of stuff and, you know, not listen to my dad when he would say, you're going to hurt it, you're going to feel it later. And be like, whatever, dad, I'm Superman. Well, now I'm feeling it. And like for years, now I realize if I lay down straight and I put my legs like straight, like I feel like this nerve pain and, and like that's the cause of it. My spine always has this, this pain that's it's always under pressure. It's always under pressure. Sorry, I couldn't resist it. But, but like that, now I know the cause of the pain. And like, like some of us are fighting these battles like with the wrong weapons. And like you've got the enemy is, is attacking you constantly and he's winning again and again because you're doing all the wrong things. You don't even recognize or acknowledge that he's at work in your life and you're like, well, maybe I just need to make more money. Maybe I just need a different relationship. And you're trying to fix these supernatural problems with all of these things that you know but we fight a battle that we are not familiar with. We need the help of the Spirit of God, and we need to use supernatural. Um, that's why he says that we need to put on the armor of God. This is a supernatural life that we're called to live. Whenever we went to Albania a couple years ago, one of the things that I noticed in Albania was all of these bunkers that were just everywhere. There's concrete bunkers all over the place. And it's, it's kind of cool to see, but it's also really creepy because you're like, okay, when you think a bunker and you see one, it's like, okay, that's like a bomb threat or something like what's going on. And the funny thing about Albania is Albania is kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Most people, you couldn't pick it out on a map. You couldn't really tell where it was. But like in the, in the 80s, the communist leader of Albania at the time, Enver Hoxha, he said, and he told, the, he told the nation, he convinced the nation that the problem that we all needed to be concerned about, that Albanians needed to be concerned about, was the Americans were going to come and they were going to bomb the Albanians. And we, had, we weren't in war with them, we weren't fighting them, but he, he convinced them, he convinced everybody that everything America stands for is evil. And actually, Albania at that time became the first atheist state, first one in history where they, they outlawed all religion. And they decided, you know what the problem is going to be, that this leader decided to convince everybody America's the problem. We weren't coming to get them. We weren't coming to attack them. And they built all of these bunkers all over the place in fear of what America would do. And we never came for them. But the problem, the real threat against Albania was the fact that they removed every sign of God. They removed everything that had to do with religion. And they made God the enemy. And what they didn't realize, Albanians fell for the trick that Americans were coming to get them, but really the enemy was their own leader and the fact that they had removed every sign of God. And what, what many of us are doing is we're building bunkers in our lives and we're fighting and we're protecting against the wrong enemy. And we think if we just had more of this and we just did this a different way, then we could win some battles. But really, the enemy has been trying to fool us and trick us this whole time. And he's going to do it. If you, continue, if you fall for it, I think that's one of the greatest things that he does is he'll convince you. You think that it's like, you know, what's his name? Mike Myers in Halloween. Like you think like that is the devil. Like it's, it's a signal of like what evil looks like. But he's like, ah, it's just, I'm going to put that out there and make you think that's what I do. I'm going to make you think that you need to live in physical fear of your life. And he doesn't want to do that. 
But, but, but what the enemy's always doing is he's trying to fool us into fighting the wrong battles. Now, I want to look at a story in Matthew 17. And Jesus does this great miracle, but his disciples didn't recognize the problem. They didn't recognize what was going on in, this prob- in, in the story of this, of this guy. So Matthew 17, it says this, at the foot of the mountain, Jesus had come down from the, the, from the mountain. And it says, a large crowd was waiting for them. A man came and knelt before Jesus. Lord, have mercy on my son. And this is maybe just a different um, telling of what Brooke just talked about also in worship. Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffers terribly. He falls into the fire and the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. So Jesus said, you faithless and corrupt people. Would you like to be a Jesus follower? And he turns around and is like, you faithless, corrupt people. How long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Then Jesus rebuked the demon in the boy, and it left him. From that moment, the boy was well, and afterward, the disciples asked Jesus privately, why couldn't we cast out that demon? You don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I tell you the truth, if you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move, and nothing would be impossible. What I think is interesting about this story is that the disciples were trying to heal the boy, which is a great thing. It's a good thing for someone to be healed. But they were using the wrong tools. The boy didn't need to be healed. The boy had a demon. So Jesus recognized what they didn't see. And Jesus begins to call out the supernatural attack on this boy. And maybe that is exactly your situation today. Maybe you've been bound by sickness, or maybe somebody in your family has been bound by sickness, and you, begin to, and you need to begin to pray some supernatural prayers and begin to bind the enemy. Maybe it is a sickness in their body, and it's just their body falling apart. But Jesus had the ability to recognize what nobody else could see. And while obviously we're not Jesus, he's calling us to look for the possibility of a supernatural attack. So we need to be aware that if, if you never think that's possible, you're never going to use those tools. But, but what he's doing is he's trying to tell us, be aware of what's going on in the world because then you're going to win some battles. You're going to begin to win some fights. And we had a girl in our student ministry one time that she was having nightmares constantly. And she said, I need you to come and pray for us. So Brooke and I went to her house and we began, we walked into her room and we're like, and we noticed a couple of things in the room. And we noticed she has like a, an, a Native American dream catcher over her bed. She has like a Chinese fortune calendar that's like good luck and all this stuff in her room. And I just remember, I, I, I told her, I was like, well, look, we want to pray for you. And we believe that God's going to going to do a miracle, but I think that you need to get out the other tools that you're trying to fix the problem with. Get those things out of your room, because this is not, these aren't the solutions. You either rely completely on Jesus or not at all. There's no like adding Jesus to all these other attempts. He wants all or nothing. So I, we, we, we asked her to do that, and she got rid of all the other stuff. We prayed for her, and she never had nightmares again. And I think that, you know, we just got to be careful that we're not trying to fight these battles with the wrong tools. It's Jesus. Like, he's the answer. He's the one that that we call on, and he's the one who's the hope for every battle that we end up fighting. And it's funny that Jesus says you don't have enough faith, that you can't see what's really there. How many of you ever, you guys remember the Where's Waldo? So like, it used to be the books with like the Waldo and all in it, you know, and I showed this to Brooklyn the other day, and Brooklyn was like, she thought it was so cool. So I, I, I told her, I was like, um, I was like, see if you can find Waldo, and she can't find him. Now, I don't know if you do it like I do it, but I normally start on the outsides, and I'll like go all the way around the outside, and I try to like wind down and see if I can find him. Well, I completely missed him on this one. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it, but anybody see him? A couple of y'all see him, so look, there he is. Waldo's right there in the corner. And, and, and I just remember thinking like, as a kid, like maybe I'm just not good at this. But the truth is you can train yourself to see him. You can train yourself to see the red and the white, and you can notice it really well whenever you have an eye for it. And that's what we need to do supernaturally. We need to begin to ask the Spirit of God, let me see what I've been missing. Let me recognize what I've been missing. Because you're not going to win battles if you don't see it, if you never notice what the enemy's trying to do. So I want to answer a question today. How do I know if I'm in a spiritual battle? How do I know if I'm in a spiritual battle? This is the question that I want to a- answer. So I'm going to try the best that I can to try and answer because many of us are asking the question, how do I know if I'm even in a spiritual battle? And so let me just tell you right off the bat, you're always in a spiritual battle. But here's the, <laughs> here's the first one. Here's the first answer in the first way that you know that you're in a spiritual battle. <laughs> it's coming from all directions. When it's coming from all directions, how many balls do you have? Stop it. <laughs> It's like the endless ping pong balls. So somebody hit me right here. That was a great shot, by the way. But when it's coming from all directions, it's a good sign that you're under a spiritual attack. 
Like, you ever feel like that? Like, it's just overwhelming. And everywhere you turn, you're like, man, maybe I can find some healing or some peace over here. So you just kind of run away, and you look for, like, hope and, and, and some security somewhere, but it's just coming from everywhere. Every relationship is falling apart. You, you lose that promotion or that, you know, all this stuff is going on. Something happens in your physical body, and that sin comes back up. Like, you just, everywhere it's coming at you. I think whenever that begins to happen, all of a sudden, out of the blue, it's coming from everywhere, I think it's a pretty good sign that you're under a spiritual attack. And if you can recognize the signs that the enemy is trying to do that, man, I believe that you can begin to see and you can begin to fight it better. Acts 19, this is a crazy story in the Bible. It says this, uh, that there was a group of Jews traveling from town to town casting out evil spirits. And they tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation. So they're doing like witchcraft and they just add Jesus to witchcraft saying, I command you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches to come out. So we don't know this Jesus, but... We're just going to try this Jesus that he uses. So these seven sons of Sceva, who was a leading priest, were doing this. But one time they tried it, and the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus, and I know Paul, but who are you? And some of us are fighting battles, and the enemy's saying the same thing. Who are you? Who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them, and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. You know, what's interesting is that it, it illustrates what I think is so key that we need to understand that when the enemy comes to overpower you or wants to destroy you, he will completely overpower you. It will come from every direction. You won't be able to handle it. And this one spirit overpowers seven guys to where they leave naked and abused and embarrassed. Like, you know, whenever you're naked, like whenever you have that dream that you show up and you're like, I have a dream that I'm not completely naked, but I have a dream that I show up at some nice place with a muscle shirt and I'm like, and I'm like covering up, you know, I'm like, oh, like everybody's going to see me, you know? And, but like when you're, when you're feel vulnerable, all you want to do is cover up. All you want to do is run for cover. And that's exactly what the enemy is trying to do in us. He's trying to make you vulnerable and and easy to attack to where you're just embarrassed. So if he can bring it from all over, he's going to try everything he can and attack you from as many directions as possible. And if he can win that battle, if he can make you run for cover, then he's won. You're not going to be able to fight. You're not going to have any authority. You're not going to have any boldness whenever you feel like you're just naked and battered and bruised. I remember I just told a story about us going and pray for that girl. There was a season at our church that we came from that me and our college pastor were what I now dub the demon patrol. So, like, uh, we, we, we had this culture where people just thought, like, like we've got a demon in the house, maybe. We're going to call up the pastors, call up the church, and get somebody to come and bless it and pray for it. And we got stuck with that, with that job. So, so, like, we're like, do we really even believe, like, we need to do this, you know? And, like, but they're just like, we're just going to humor them. Let's just go and be nice. Let's just go and pray. So we went to house after house, and we were just praying for people. And, like, I just remember thinking, like, I want to tell these people, I don't have any special powers. Like, there's nothing about me just as a pastor that, that I'm, like, better than you or have like, have, like, more authority. Like, the same spirit of Jesus that's in me is in you. The Bible says that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. So you have the same authority. Take that authority whenever your family is being attacked or whenever you feel it from all directions. You speak the name of Jesus. But, but the power of the name of Jesus comes from inside, not the outside. So these seven sons, they tried to add Jesus to their witchcraft. It didn't work like that. When the Spirit of God lives inside of you, the authority of Jesus is available at any moment. But you can't just like add it on. Maybe I'll try this thing. But whenever we give our lives wholeheartedly to Jesus, man, nothing can attack us. Nothing can, well, it can attack us, but nothing can win. Nothing can win. So here's the second thing. So how do I know if if I'm in a spiritual battle? No more balls, right? Okay, just checking. Second thing, you're suffering isn't a consequence. Your suffering isn't a consequence. Some of us, we do stupid things, and you're like, oh, the devil's really after me, and we're like, really? You just did some really stupid things? So like, that's the consequences, you know? Actually, the Bible says this in 1 Peter 4, if you're insulted because you bear the name of Christ, then you will be blessed, for the glorious Spirit of God rests upon you. If you suffer, however, it must not be for murder or stealing or making trouble or prying in other people's affairs. So like, you lost all your friends because you're a gossip. Oh, the devil's after me. No, you just, you're a horrible friend. (laughs) Like, but some people you want to blame the devil for like all the bad things that are happening in your life when it's like, no, like you need some discipline. You need to fix your stuff. 
I remember one of these house calls that we had on our demon patrol was we, uh, some, of, some of y'all know this story, but, but we show up at this house and I mean, it's just like total horror movie setting. Okay. So we show up and there's like this trailer in the back of the woods kind of thing, you know? So we pull up and like, and we had got, we just got a little bit of a scoop. We're like, we want to know what we're walking into. And so like the little girl in the house had been levitating. This is what they said. Okay. And she's been hearing from like, from like this friend kind of thing, right? So we're like, we're going to go into this. Like we're superheroes, right? And we're going to like fix this. And like I've seen the exorcist. This one in well. So, <laughs> so, like, so like we're going into this. And I'm thinking like, man, I hope we got what it takes, you know? So we walk in the house. And like the first thing I notice is like you're in, there's this living room space. And then there's like this long hallway. And like, and there, so we get in. We're like, well, I guess maybe we'll pray in the girl's bedroom first, you know? So like we meet the little girl and she looks at me. She's sweet, like almost too sweet. You know what I mean? So like, so we're like, let's go pray in her bedroom first. So we go pray in her bedroom and she's sitting on the bed, like Indian style. And, and like, and we're praying. And like when I'm praying, you know how like sometimes you leave an eye open just in case. So like I have my eye open just waiting to see if I'm like looking. I'm like, is that space under her? And I'm like, and she's just looking and smiling at us. And I'm like, man, I was like, I don't know. It don't look too creepy, but I'm just going to keep an eye on just in case. Nothing happens in the room. So I'm like, okay, well, it must be fine. Let's just move on to another room. So, so we go into the other bedroom and we pray in the other bedroom. Don't feel nothing there. It feels totally fine. We walk into the living room. She says, and she's like, well, you know what? There's something I kind of missed. I wanted to tell you, like, like the demon will, like, it's not just that it speaks to her, but it'll, it'll hiss at us sometimes. We're like, hiss at you? And like, yeah, we all hear it in the room. So like, so she's like, you can hear it every now and then. He'll just, and she emulates you. She said, sometimes we go, like, hiss at you. And I'm like, man, I don't know about this. So I'm like, we just, I'm like, I'm just like starting to get nervous, you know? So like, you're like pastor's praying in the bedroom over there and I'm in the living room and I'm walking around and I'm with my eyes open and I'm praying, you know? And then all of a sudden, while I'm in the middle of this trailer, I'm praying and I hear, shh. And I'm like, oh, no, I know you didn't. <laughs> and I'm like, I look around, you know, like the hair stands up on my back. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm like calling the name of Jesus. And I'm like, I thought we came here to save them, but I'm about to be saved myself, you know. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to run at any moment. I'm looking for the door. I'm praying and all. So I'm walking around and I'm praying and I'm praying. And then my eye catches something. And I'm like, oh, no. Y'all, this ain't. Pastor, come see. So I call him over, and I'm like, I don't know what we should do, man, but come see. Come pray over here in the room with me. So we're praying in the room, and we look up, and I, I say, look on the fireplace. So he looks up on the fireplace, and there's a, on the fireplace, there's an automatic air freshener <laughs> that every 30 seconds to a minute, shh, shh. I don't know if they didn't know they had an automatic air freshener. <laughs> but this thing, every few seconds, would just hiss at you. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't have the heart to tell him. Do you have the heart to tell him? And he's like, I don't have the heart to tell him. So we just tell him, we don't feel nothing. I think you're good. And we just left. <laughs> so like, but I remember thinking, I'm like, I'm like, man, like I've been in some situations where I pray in a room and I'm like, there's something going on. But there was nothing at all. But it's funny how like people assume because of some of the signs they see that maybe that's just, that's the devil. Like not everything's the devil. Sometimes it's your problem. Sometimes you put it on the fireplace. Sometimes it's your issue. So like while you do have to be aware that the enemy is after you, if it's your issue, you fix it. You have to make some things right. So don't be fighting the, the enemy whenever it's, that's another thing that he does to distract us is he'll let you screw up your life and then blame him for it. And he's like, I'm good. As long as they screwed up, it's fine. So don't let the enemy win that battle in your life. Here's the last thing and I want you to get. How do you know if you're under spiritual attack? you suddenly develop an enemy. When you suddenly develop an enemy, you probably under a spiritual attack because it's, it's easy to adopt a person as an enemy. It's easy to, because it, it gives you something to put the blame on. Yeah. But a person is not the problem. Right. People are not the problem. People are your purpose. We're called to people. And if the enemy is going to do anything, he's going to try to make you hate the very thing you're called to. He's going to try to make you, you know, distraught with them and hate those relationships and be all frustrated with people. When you're called to love that person, he's going to try to make you think that person is your enemy, but he's the enemy. Here's what the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, and the, the, the team can come up as we get ready to wrap up. 1 Peter 5 says this, stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil, for he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him. Be strong in your faith. 
remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering that you are. And what I love about this verse is it brings us back to perspective. It says, listen, the enemy is not only trying to fool you and trying to pull one over you and trying to do some misdirection and make you think the enemy's really over here. It's not a person. Your problem is not that person. Even what we read in Ephesians 6, that we don't struggle against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual rulers and authorities of the unseen world, that, that he will do everything he can to make you think that it's a person while he's prowling around like a roaring lion that whole time. He's after you. He wants to destroy you. And the interesting thing is, it's, it's cool how Peter even mentions, he says, that it's not just you, but your family of believers all over the world are going through the same thing. What the enemy wants you to, wants you to think he wants to take you and he wants to isolate you and make you think, this is just me. This person has a problem with me. Or maybe I did something wrong and that's why I can't have a relationship. And you begin to think that it's only you. But together is how we unveil the enemy's plan. Whenever you begin to speak together and you go to anchor group, when you don't feel like going to anchor group and you realize, you know what, I'm not the only one dealing with this stuff. I'm not the only one who's been slighted. I'm not the only one who's been wronged. And I can clearly see the enemy is working in somebody or through somebody. And it's not that person, but instead we need to pray for that person. You know what I found? You can't, you can't hate somebody that you're committed to pray for. You can't hate somebody that you're committed to fast and pray for. So you have a decision. Every time that you feel like you have a person as an enemy, you have a decision to say, that person, I'm going to kick them out of my life. That person is my problem. Or you can begin to pray and say, I'm not going to let the enemy destroy these relationships. I'm not going to let the enemy do what he's been winning at all this time. So we're going to be like Jesus whenever it feels like you don't have to be, when it feels like you've been wronged. So I, and these are just a couple of things that I, don't, I, I didn't necessarily have like, you know, a main scripture that I pulled any of this from. But when I was praying, I just felt like God spoke this for the church today. And when you feel like it's coming from all places, it could be the enemy. When you feel like it's just coming from all over, it could be the enemy. And another thing is when, whenever you're, your suffering is not a consequence and you feel the suffering in your spirit anyway, it could be the enemy. And when you finally, when you just all of a sudden have an enemy out of no place, it could be the enemy working against you. So I don't know if that's for somebody today, but I just want to ask you, let's just let the Spirit of God open up our eyes to maybe what the enemy's been trying to do so that we can win the battles instead of just getting frustrated or using the wrong tools. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. And I'm just going to ask you to listen to the Spirit of God invite you. Actually, the first thing is really, you know, the Bible says that, just like we read in the book of Acts, that like outside of a relationship with Jesus, there's no power or authority in our lives. And if you're going to win a supernatural battle, if you're going to win the fight that the enemy is trying to fight against you, you have to be able to call on the name of Jesus. Now, the Bible does say that anyone, whoever calls on the name of Jesus, will be saved. You can be saved today when you call on the name of Jesus. But the authority to win supernatural battles, that is only available to those who've given their lives to Christ. The good news is, though, so today, you can make a decision right now to surrender your life to Jesus. And immediately, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit fills our life and that power that same power that raised Jesus from the dead is now alive in us you feel like you've been losing some supernatural battles you need Jesus you need Jesus and not as an add-on but as a replacement he wants to replace everything about our life that we surrender we die to ourselves, and let him take over if you've been losing some battles today maybe you need to give your life to Jesus for the first time but maybe you're a Christian who just doesn't understand the authority that you live in that you have, that you need to walk in, that you need to embrace. He wants to help you to win battles. Thank you for joining us for this week's message from Anchor Chapel. If you'd like to support the ministry of Anchor Chapel, you can easily do so on our website at anchorchapel.com or follow us on social media at Anchor Chapel. God bless. We'll see you next week.